Do who, ladies and gentlemen? This is Internet Personality Evangelist, and I refuse to take part in the ongoing farce of doing Waspinator impersonations because Waspinator is Waspinator. This is a review of Generations Waspinator, an updated deluxe Waspinator for all the fans who never got the original deluxe Waspinator back before Waspinator became the figurehead of the Waspinator sub fandom that exists to this day. Let's take a look at Waspinator and see how Waspinator turned out. Waspinator's wasp mode makes one major victory right out of the gate. It can stand on its thin little wasp legs all by themselves. That is genuinely impressive, though that also means those thin parts are made of a rigid plastic that I really hope doesn't snap somewhere down the road. As for its actual shape, there is a somewhat oversized underbelly chunk hanging down below Waspinator's bug head, and his robot mode hands are just chilling out there on the sides. But honestly, I think its overall shape is really pleasant. It has a natural curvature that helps mask some of the bot mode bulk, and does a better job than I'd expected from initial pictures. It's also worth noting at this point that I don't have the original Waspinator handy at all, so I can't make any direct comparisons. But Generations Waspinator does have some on-topic colors. His varied greens all come off a little cartoonish, though not necessarily in a bad way, and the striped bug butt and metallic compound eyes really do it for me, along with the clear wings that somehow are able to very often capture light in a nearly crystalline way. There's also a switch to make him flap. It's kind of unconvincing, but hey, action features! Those wings are also on ball joints at the base of their connection, which adds to the bare handful of posability for this mode. The rear legs can swivel on a mushroom peg, while the front legs are individually ball jointed pretty tightly. It's nothing special, but short of a neck joint of some kind for the bug head, it's about all I'd expect from a wasp that also turns into a waspinator. This transformation can look fairly complex, though most of that just comes from needing to know the order of operations. Once you unlock the robot arms and feet, the lower body is a simple case of unfolding all that is folded. The rest of the process up top handles itself pretty easily, with a rather slick final touch of the shoulders compressing while simultaneously splitting and expanding the bug head turned robot chest. Unfortunately, all the wasp legs just kind of hang out, adjustable but permanently jutting. This is like the distillation of all things Waspinator. He's extremely close to his in-show mainframe CG model, though the colors have taken a few liberties here and there in both hue and placement, and despite a somewhat hidden hole through his chest, Waspinator's proportions and build look friggin' fantastic! The head sculpt is gorgeous, though this generation's version has lost a lot of paint outside of the basest yellow detailing. His compound eyes are trying to go for a clear crystalline light pipe look, but unfortunately do not pull it off very well. I wish they were inked in like the bigger compound eyes on his pectorals, all metallic blue and bugly. The wing flap gimmick is still present and still middling, but you can pull the wasp mode stinger out to unfold into a firearm. The gun's pretty on target, though it doesn't actually do anything other than look pretty in Waspinator's hands. But hey, I'm not clamoring for a spring-loaded missile. I'm happy to see that trimmed out of the budget in place of, like, moving parts and stuff. This is the part of the video where I do a misguided Waspinator impersonation and show you that he has a really good neck joint, except I'm gonna leave the impersonation part out and just show you that he has a really good neck joint. There's no real side-to-side -side tilt, but there's hardcore upwards tilt, which is great because Waspinator you know, he likes to fly, so this is great. Means he can look forward while he's flying. I'm happy. He's got ball-jointed shoulders. They work pretty well. He's got a ball-jointed elbow that affords a bicep swivel in its existence. He's got wrist joints, like full-on. His, his hands are separate pieces, mushroom pegged in, and that's not bad. He's got no waist joint. Uh, this time, it's I think pretty forgivable given the way they designed how all this stuff slots together. There's really no room for a cut in here anywhere that I can see. He has ball-jointed hips with a thigh swivel. Uh, he's got feet that um, don't really do anything. You can, you can uh, support different postures by folding this down so that when you put him down, he's got like a slightly different uh, standing base, which can help with some poses. And he's got knees, and his knees, uh, I'm sad to say, kind of suck. Uh, they, they bend about that far. Like, not very far at all. Uh, I don't really understand why. I, I'm guessing that it has to do with the, the, the form factor of the wasp mode and the curvature in here, but I don't know. I I feel like, especially given the large amount of space over here, yeah, I mean, this movement is blocked by a small nub on his knee, and, and for good reason, because that would be bending his knee the wrong way. It's a bummer, because his posability on paper is pretty good, 
and then you hit these knees, and it's like, no matter what you do, his legs are always kind of either still or just vaguely bent. And, I don't know, that, that kind of bums me out. I, I wish his knees were better. Uh, he's also got ball joints on his wasp wings. But be careful. Uh, a buddy of mine saw the smallest stress mark inside the clear plastic of these wasp wings and went, Oh, I wonder if I move it. And the thing broke off right there. So, mine seem fine, but... There are a number of reasons why I'm growing more and more terrified of this toy. I'm worried that these things are going to snap off at the stems, and more so, this is the big one. This has happened to multiple people. Uh, there's a transformation joint inside the shoulders here, and the rotational area upon which it moves, like there's there's a pin there, and there's a, a little, little thing I'm going to do here that's not a pin. I don't know why I'm highlighting it, but be very careful with this stuff. Up here... Inside this assembly, people have had things break. Look for cracking. Stress marks are going to happen. Uh, it seems like they're very common, but they are not the immediate culprit of what's going on. Look for minor micro-fractures, because if you see them, something bad might happen. Don't feel like your Waspinator is an immediate threat of exploding in your hands. Just treat it well, and uh, if, you, if, if something bad happens, I hope you can get another one. <laughs> Um, I'm, I, I'm terrified of mine, but not for any reason that I think anyone out there should be terrified. I just, too many of my friends had it happen to them, and I feel like it's an infectious thing. Uh, and hopefully, hey, maybe the Takarotomi version <laughs> feels a bit better, we'll see. But, uh, for now, just be careful with the joints up in here. Be careful with the joints in here. And it just, treat Waspinator like he is, uh, treated in the show. Uh, and that is, like, something that can break apart pretty easily. Except in the show, people are actually trying to break him. In this case, I wouldn't. I mean, like, if I were a total idiot with a toy that is this well-known for, you know, falling apart, I certainly wouldn't wing him at the side of my thing like this and pretty much invite disaster. Um, but I'm kind of, you know, a risk-taker. I'm, I'm a voyager, if you will, and maybe I just feel like inviting some disaster into my home. Anyway, uh, that hopefully terrified a few of you. Let's move on. It was easy to succumb to some overhype symptoms during the lead-up to this guy's release, but I think Generation's Waspinator came out alright. His wasp mode can come off a bit compromised if you aren't able to deal with the bot mode junk that's visible on it, but it's kinda jiving with me for whatever reason. Like I said before, I think it's that curvature. His transformation and robot mode are really cool and worth the price of admission, just keep an eye on those folding shoulder hinges since a few people have had theirs fracture. I feel pretty good about Generations Waspinator overall, and I think he's worth the retail price of admission. Much like his Wavemate skids, he's sometimes skirted with aftermarket prices that will greatly diminish the toy's value proposition, so eBay at your own risk. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I guess it bears mentioning that this guy's also been making some admittedly weird appearances in IDW's comic continuity. I thought nothing of it until Sarah Stone started drawing a slimmer and slightly more insectoid biped Waspinator in the Windblade book. Now I wish I could get a replacement head and chest for this figure. A Waspinator world is never satisfied.